Welcome back everybody. It is uh, officially fall now here in the garden and we are moving things along for winter time. I've just uncovered these spinaches that I seeded a week ago and these are spinaches that I am growing up to be full sized by winter time that I will be harvesting over the winter. Now spinach doesn't like to germinate in warm soil so I seeded them kind of thick because it's been hot here and uh, the weather though has cooperated nicely and every single one of them it seems like germinated. The other reason I seeded them thickly is because I was using older seed that I bought a large quantity of, a variety that I happen to like a lot called Corvair and I was not sure that all of them are still viable but they seem to be holding pretty well because they again they all came up. So um, I am going to be thinning those uh, in a couple spots here here, here, we've got some that didn't come up. I'm a little wonder, uh, a little curious about why that might be. Is there a pest that's taken them out? Um, but either way, I'm going to use some of the ones that I thin from the thick areas and put them back in there, transplant them into there. So let's do it. I've taken this back to one, but I remember now before I get too ahead of myself that I want to do an experiment where I try some with multiple plants in each hole to see if I get a better yield maybe. And if I leave it at one plant, sometimes the leaves can just get to be like dinner plate size almost, and it's a little big. So if I have multiple plants in a single hole, I want to see if I get a more, you know, maybe maybe a size like this, a softball or something like that. Um, but I've got this landscape fabric down here because in the winter when I'm harvesting these, they just tend to get super dirty at the bottom, and I want to have cleaner leaves this winter, so I'm trying this out. I am in love with what I'm seeing in this bed right here. It is just Oh, it's, it is ideal right now. Uh, this, these are, again, greens that I am growing now in the fall to get to full size so we can harvest them through the winter. These lettuces, they will last in a low tunnel, which we'll show you next month. Uh, they'll last until easily Christmas. I have had them one out of the last three years last until the following April, but uh, they have died the, each of the last two years. Um, but salad till Christmas is... Is, is good enough, I think. And this green oak leaf is just, oh, so gorgeous right now. I, I mean, all of them. I, 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 it's hard to say. Every time I look at another one, I'm in love with it even a little bit more. But what the idea is, is that these are single cut salad heads. Uh, one brand is called Salanova. There's also Easy Leaf, but you cut the whole head uh, and the leaves fall apart into a salad mix. So I'm growing head style um, in a transplant that will be eaten as salad mix here. This is a crop that I'm always surprised does so well in the winter time. Cilantro, I think of it, you know, it's a salsa ingredient, uh, summer, you know, goes so well with summer things, but it survives the coldest that the winter gives. And so I grow it in the winter and, uh, or in the fall to have in the winter. And I've got a kind of a thin stand here, so I will be seeding a little bit more into here. It's a bit late right now. We are in the, the, the second half of September around the equinox. I, I would want to have this seeded more in the beginning of September, but with a thin stand like this, like on this side especially, I'm going to be seeding some more so that I can have a nice full stand. I've also have some dill that is right up here. Dill is not as hardy, but it's one that I like to have a little staple of uh, in the garden so that I can come out and harvest for cooking. The last thing we have in this bed for overwintering is lettuce salad mix, which I have five rows of. Trust me, two rows just haven't come up very well, so I will be reseeding these. Um, it's a different variety, so this is one variety that is slower to come up. And then the one row on the other side is salad turnips, Hawkeye turnips, which again, like the uh, Salanova, the single cut salad heads, they do pretty well up until about Christmas, and then we need to get them out of there before the really deep freeze sets in. To start these, right now I've got this row cover, which is giving a little bit of warmth, but also protecting from the rabbits, which are really ravenous at this uh, time of year. And also flea beetles are things that eat brassicas, so I wanna keep those turnips protected from there. Once it gets colder, um, probably once our nighttime temperatures start getting down into the 40s and 30s, I'll be putting a bigger tunnel with plastic over it to really force the growth on these because uh, it'll be plenty warm during the daytime, but I want to keep them insulated at night 
and create a little bit of a, you know, greenhouse inside there. So those low tunnels will be setting up in the next month or so, and uh, we'll show them to you next time. So I noticed as I was walking by some damage on some cherry tomatoes, and we've got our, uh, it looks like a caterpillar pest in there, which could be a hornworm or a tomato fruit worm. Tomato fruit worm is, is the same thing as the corn earworm. It just depends on what plant it's on. But I see some on the green fruit and some on the red fruit both. So. Um, I, I suspect this, there's an active pest out there. It's not just damage from before. Um, I'm not too worried because I only saw it on a couple of these fruits, but if I were to see these uh, on all the fruits, I'd be certainly looking to take some action. Something else I noticed was uh, on this orange, other variety, a split in it. And this is just something that happens when it uh, gets a lot more water. And, and we just got an inch and a quarter of rain yesterday here, two days ago. We just got an inch and a quarter of rain and uh, that will cause uh, uh, these fruit to to burst open if you don't get them harvested right away and since i delayed on harvesting we're seeing some splitting out there uh, i've got this row cover on this crop here which is a little tiny onion crop and i've got hoops on it and i opted to try this out here because i've had some bad experiences with hot temperatures and little very weak transplants where the fabric is right on top of them, really frying them. And so I tried to elevate it here uh, with these really weak transplants that I put in here. But um, I'd normally just have it floating right on top. But for this time, an experiment. Our peppers here are um, showing a couple issues. Uh, I've got sun scald right here, which we talked about last time, but this is where the sun is hitting it. There's not good leaf cover. Um, that, you can just slice that off. Another thing that you should slice off before eating is this disease. This is anthracnose on peppers. And this is caused by usually warm conditions, but usually wet conditions are the more uh, important factor here. And we've had a lot of heavy dews and also to establish the spinach and lettuce in, in the other beds that are near here, I've been running a sprinkler, which has been spreading this and causing this to proliferate. So I wanna remove this anytime I see it so that it will not bounce spores off of here when it's wet and spread it to other peppers um, in the garden. One other thing I wanted to say is we're about a week away from our first frost here and peppers don't take that frost pretty well. They will, they will be damaged. And so you wanna take peppers off that you want to eat before that frost. And ones that look like this, where they're partially colored, oh, up to about 75% colored. If you leave them on the counter or in room temperature, they will fully ripen. They'll get to be full colored. And then once they are full colored or at the stage that you want to eat them, put them in the fridge because they will uh, stay longer that way. About a month ago, I topped this Brussels sprout plant and mid Early to mid-September is ideal time to be topping uh, Brussels sprout plants. So I just topped the other three, but you can see the difference here. I've got big Brussels sprouts here at the top. And as we look at the two stalks, it's hard to see from there, but as we zoom in, you'll be able to see that the sprouts along the stalk of this Brussels sprout plant right here are, oh, two times the size maybe of the ones on this one, certainly three times the size of the ones on those over there. So it does pay off. And by the time we get, oh, to mid-October or early November, after we've had a couple good freezes and these things are tasting really good, these Brussels sprouts should all be, oh, nice size sprouts to eat. In these beds is where I grew pumpkins and winter squash. We've looked at them in the past. We talked about powdery mildew, but the harvest is done now. Uh, they were ready. And because the powdery mildew was getting pretty thick in here, I harvested as soon as I could. Squash bugs are always an issue in pumpkins and winter squash. And so as soon as I get the harvest out, I also rip the vines out and send them on the way in the uh, city's uh, greens bags. And the reason is that squash bugs overwinter as adults and leaving that food out here, those plants, for them to fatten up and build their stores of energy for the winter will uh, is, is bad. It means that there's more of them for next year. So I get that all out of here. And however, I do leave a couple bait squash here. So I leave a couple of the squash that were out here that weren't yet mature. There are places that those squash bugs will flock to. And then 
enter these, I turn them over every day and I squash any squash bugs that are left over to uh, control that population. I try to get as much out of this garden as possible. And so these beds where the greens are planted for the winter were other plantings earlier this year. This bed with the spinach was our cucumber and zucchini bed. And the bed with the lettuce is, uh, where the lettuce is, excuse me, is where the garlic was. And, uh, and then where we were in the pumpkins is going to be this year's garlic. So, um, but that's about it. Things are slowing down here and we'll see you next time to look at how these winter crops are growing.